ليكن يومك للشعب ودادا ليكن حبك للأرض مدا للأرض مدا Everyone will not become a Muslim. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, chapter 10, verse 99, وَلَوْ شَاهَ رَبُّكَ الْعَمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِئُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَقُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ أَوْضُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي أعدانا لهذا وما قلنا لنا أعتديا لولا أنهدانا الله ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وشفعينا محمد بن عبد الله وعلى هاله وأصحابه أهل الله Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone will not become a Muslim. Why? Because Allah says in the Quran, chapter 10, verse 99, وَلَوْ شَاهَ رَبُّكَ الْعَمَنَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كُلُّهُمْ جَمِيعًا أَفَأَنْتَ تُكْرِئُ النَّاسَ حَتَّى يَقُونُ مُؤْمِنِينَ If it had been your Lord's will, they would have believed. Everyone on earth, will you then compel mankind against their will to believe? This is to tell us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the world, the universe, and all of us, the Muslims among us, and those who are not Muslims, is the one who has willed it that not all of us will become Muslims. Not everyone will become Muslims. Some of us, alhamdulillah, with Allah's mercy, we have accepted Islam, alhamdulillah, and we are living by Islam, and we are praying to die by Islam, upon Islam. But no matter what we do, not everyone will become a Muslim. Why? It is because it is the will of Allah that the world will be the way it is. So then, what are we today about this? We continue to do da'wah, we continue to invite people to Islam, we continue to exhibit the trait of Islam of a Muslim in our, in our attitude, we begin to invite them with our speech, with our character. We begin to invite them with our lectures. We begin to invite them by telling them about Islam, by showing them the beauty of Islam. And of course, we must understand that while we do all of this, guidance belongs to Allah alone. And Allah demonstrated that to his messenger, his uncle, Abu Talib, took care of him for a larger part of his life. And he loved him even more than he loved his own children. He protected him with his life. When the courage of Mecca, you know, were doing everything to kill him. And he did nothing wrong except to tell them that worship just one God. Abu Talib protected him, defended him with his life. At the risk of his own life, at the risk of his family's lives. But despite all of that, Abu Talib never openly confessed his Islam. He never openly said that, I accept Islam. And at the point of his death, Prophet was still trying to persuade him, still trying to convince him to become a Muslim. And he insisted that he was not going to say the Shahada, the Kalma to La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. And eventually he didn't say it. And there were a lot of arguments among scholars that would he be regarded a Muslim or not? That is not for today. Nevertheless, the point we're trying to make is that despite his love, his affection, his defense for his for, for, for Muslim, he, he didn't accept Islam. At, at least this is what we understand from the narrations that we have read. And that's to tell us that sometimes Allah will decree that you, a Muslim, the person you love the most, will not be a Muslim. Like I saw the video of one of our brothers uh, several months back, he was crying. I'm praying, asking that there's Allah grant Islam to my mom. Or Allah make my mother a Muslim. Or Allah grant Islam to my mom. Or Allah make my mother a Muslim. It is because Allah grants guidance to whosoever he wills. And Islam will not be given to everyone. But we are Muslims. And then we have amongst us in our communities, in our homes, even in our families, people that are not Muslims. Are we supposed to eat them? Are we supposed to fight them? I was supposed to pick your enemy to with them. No. La ikraha fi din qad tabayyana rushdu min al-ghay. If you say a Muslim, a scholar, or anyone at all, 
anyone who pretends to be one, saying that you must go and kill the unbelievers, you must harm them, you must eat them, tell that person, what you are saying is not Islam. It's not Islam. Rasulullah lived in Mecca for 13 years, preaching Islam to the Meccans. He didn't want them to die. He went to Tahif to preach Islam, and he was stoned by the young and the old. The angels on the mountain came to him that, command us, tell us, what should we do with them? Just give a command, destroy them, they're all going to be destroyed. The person said, I was not raised to come and destroy the world, I was raised to save the world. And then he said, oh Allah, he call me, oh Allah, guide my people, grant them Islam. They do this because they do this because they do not know Allah. Grant them Islam. So this to tell us that we must understand that our neighbors who are not Muslims, our families who are not Muslims, not everyone will eventually accept Islam. But nevertheless, we must treat them with goodness. We must treat them with righteousness. We must treat them with kindness. Because why? We find this character in our Rasul, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We must treat them with kindness. We must treat them with respect. Mutual respect is important for us to understand as Muslims. And we say that understanding diversity in language, in ethnicity, in culture, in faith, even in mentality, is integral to our faith. Allah wants us to understand that we are created in different tribes, different ethnicities, we speak different languages, and we belong to different cultures. We must respect other people, just as we want them to do what? To respect us. Mutual respect. All of us are not Muslims. All of us cannot be Christians. All of us cannot be Jews. All of us cannot be whatever it is that exists again. We must accept that we are going to be what Allah has decreed for us to be. And we must live by that. So, the Muslims, we Muslims, we must respect others. And we must demand that they respect us as well. It's very important. And avoiding arming others with our tongues and whatever it is that we do. Don't be surprised. On the day of Qiyamah, Allah will be in the defense of a non-Muslim against a Muslim. Why? Because the Muslim has cheated the non-Muslim and said, I cheated him because he's, he's a kafir or because he's this or because he's that and because I'm a Muslim, I am better because uh, I am khaira humma. I would say, you think you are good, but, but you are not good. I made you a Muslim. You are not a Muslim by your own will, by your own power. You didn't decide it. Allah decide. We didn't tell Allah when we come to the world, we're going to be Muslims. Allah made us Muslims by His mercy. We must accept it. And we must pray for others that also find Islam. And we cannot support injustice against others just because they are not Muslims. Injustice against anyone, whatever their faith, whatever their ethnicity, is haram in Islam. Because Allah says, We must be people that stand for justice, that stand for truth at all times. And in Islam, there's no force of confession. You cannot forcefully convert people to Islam. All of this we must understand as Muslims. And we must live with others with peace, with harmony, with respect. May Allah grant us understanding, grant us ease, make us true Muslims, and make us true followers of Rasul Salam so that we can be with him, Jennifer Dawes. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Assalamu alaikum. ورحمة الله وبركاته من بالبذل ساق قدر ما كان من منجم ولكن نحن لولاك لما شدت حال